Good evening. It's Saturday, May 21st. So I had some good news today that has got me thinking about what to talk about today. And the good news was I got um, my check for my percentage of the pots I sold at the uh, Lawrence Potter's Guild sale last Saturday. Uh, and I had a vague sense that I did okay, but I didn't, you know, check the book to see how we do it. And I, I should say, the Potter's Guild sale might be a little unusual for some people. Uh, we have 10, 12, 15 potters, and they all sell out of one uh, cash point, one, one selling position. And there's a book, and we take stickers off of pots and put them on the book and so forth. But it's a great convenience to the customers because they can pick up whatever pots they want throughout the entire sale and just make one transaction at the end. Okay. It also gives us a break. We don't have to personally handle each transaction. We, we take turns, shifts to be there at the selling station. Um, but when we're not there, we can be at our, at our booths talking to customers or going out to lunch or, you know, whatever. So that's why I didn't know how well I had done. And today the check came and it turns out I did much better than I had expected. And I should say, I don't do the Potter's Guild sale because I expect to do well. Uh, that sounds sort of defeatist, but I, I'm doing it to hang out with other potters and to get out of the studio and to talk to some people in town and to sort of, you know, see and be seen, that kind of stuff. And that philosophy, that mindset has served me well because in the past, I remember, for instance, one sale where literally I only had one customer all day. Um, one fellow after, you know, we run this sale from like 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. One guy came in after two o'clock, bought two mugs for $25 a piece, $50, that was it. <clears throat> that was, that was, that was everybody in the county that wanted to buy pots for me that day. One guy. Well, sometimes you have sales that are like that. And particularly if you're just starting out, it can, it can be pretty depressing. You, you start thinking that, well, maybe my pots aren't as good as my mom said they were. <laughs> or my professors thought they were. Or I think they are. Or whatever. And realistically, doing poorly at a particular sale on a particular day really doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't. There's, there's, there's nothing about it that it's, that's informative. Maybe your prices were too high. I don't know. Maybe they were too low. I don't know. Maybe the weather was so perfect that everybody went to the lake instead of coming to your sale. We, we had that happen for an art in the park. We had a couple of years of horrible weather, including, you know, 100 degrees in the first weekend in May kind of stuff. And then we get a perfect weekend and sales are horrible because everyone's at the lake because the weather is so perfect. So uh, I try to counsel up and coming ceramicists to, to be patient about it. There are things you can notice. There are things that might help, but it's very, very hard to understand what really happened when you don't sell well. It can actually be hard to tell what really happened when you do sell well. You know, I don't know what that was going on last Saturday. I mean, it may be retail therapy after two years of COVID isolation, maybe. I mean, I, I make the pots I make. I hope they're good pots. When I talk to people, I have things to say. I mean, I know there was one woman in particular who needed to understand how one of my steamer sets worked, and I was able to explain it, and she decided to spend the money to own it. Okay, I can't really say that that was my brilliant salesmanship. The one thing I have heard, figured out, whatever, is that if you sell out completely, I mean, if, if, if everything sells, your prices were too low. 
in the sense that your prices did nothing to slow anybody down. You were more or less giving things away. Everything else can be explained away in other ways. Truly. Um, it can help to talk to other potters to see if, you know, although you'll try not to talk to the ones who are having a great day because they're not going to be very useful at explaining why they had a great day and you didn't have a good day at all. Um, and the other thing, of course, is to be patient. You know, that's one reason why I counsel being a potter as a part-time thing. If you can, you know, so that you're not in any way desperate for the money. Desperation doesn't help. So, anyway, it's nice to have good news from time to time. Have a good day.